to speak with you. Um, yes, sir. Uh, what would you like to talk to me about? Oh, a couple things have come up. First, I hear you've been mistreating the castle staff, being demanding and rude and belittling and threatening them. They tattle? Those creeps, I'll get them for that. Actually, they have said nothing. It was Queen Daisy who overheard you, and it was she who asked me to speak to you about it. Oh, uh, well, so what about it? I can treat them however I want. I'm the grandson of the king and heir to my papa's throne in his kingdom. They are nothing but peasants who are here to serve me and who need to be kept in their places. Um, they are also the ones who could put laxatives in your porridge and burrs under your saddle. They wouldn't dare do that to me. They're afraid. Afraid of you? Huh, not hardly. Not only would they do it, but if I catch you acting like that, I'll give them the laxative and harvest the burrs for them. You wouldn't do that. Don't try me, kid. That attitude will not serve you with anyone. It's a king's destiny to serve his people, not abuse them. Yeah, well, unlike Grandpapa believes, I don't need their love, just their obedience. You won't get that either with that attitude. Do you, uh, think you need God's help, Elion? Uh, what does God have to do with this? Well, in his word, the book of Proverbs, there are numerous teachings about pride, which is arrogance, among them that God hates the proud, and that pride leads to destruction and war and downfall and punishment. Humility, on the other hand, brings wisdom, honor, and great success. Then there are Naaman and Nebuchadnezzar. Um, who? Naaman, in Kings 5, that's 2 Kings 5, um, he was a valiant soldier in the army of Syria, an enemy nation. He was highly respected even by the king, but he had leprosy. Ooh, isn't that a contagious skin disease that can kill you? Yes. A servant girl who'd been captured from Samaria told Naaman about Elisha, a prophet of God who could heal such diseases. Political arrangements were made for Naaman to go and a gift of gold, silver, and fancy clothing for the prophet was carried along. Naaman and his escort pulled up their chariots in front of Elisha's front door and the prof, uh, expecting the prophet to come out, call upon God, wave his hand over the diseased skin, and heal it. The prophet would then gratefully accept the gifts and Naaman would go home all well and happy. But that's not what happened. No? Well, what did happen? Well, Elisha sent a servant out to tell Naaman to go wash himself in the Jordan River seven times, and he'd be healed. Whoa, talk about disrespect. I'd have been furious. Uh, which Naaman was. He stormed off in a rage. But his servants pleaded with him, saying, Master, if the prophet had told you to do something difficult, you had, would have done it. Isn't it worth a try? Yeah, they couldn't have convinced me to do it, not after an insult like that. Well, they didn't want him to die, and they apparently loved him. Um, did Naaman do it? He did, and was completely healed. There's a lot more to this story, but Elion, think about it. Uh, would it have been better uh, for Naaman to stick to his pride and die of a horrible disease? Well, um, well, what about the other guy, Nebuchadnezzar? Wasn't he a king? Yes, he was. He was a king who thought he was God, and he ended up living in the fields like an animal for seven years before he learned about pride. Oh... God hates pride so much that he would do that to a king? Wow. Kings are not all that special to God, you know. You should think about that. Oh, and one more thing. Do you remember the boy with whom you teamed up at the picnic for that game of nine pins? Yeah, he wasn't bad for a peasant. What was his name? Dan. Oh, yeah, Dan. And what about him? 
Well, Dan will be studying with you from now on. What? No way. Absolutely not. Well, not that you have anything to say about it, but uh, why not? Uh, because he's a peasant and he doesn't need an education, especially an education equal to what Lily and I are getting. And what about Lily? She can't be in a room with a boy like that for hours every day. Oh, Lily will be studying everything but history and mathematics from your grandmother from now on. Dan's mother died when he was very small, and his papa died heroically in service to this kingdom. The least we can do is educate his son. So beginning tomorrow, you and Dan study together. 